What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, October 23rd, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Hispanic heartthrob, Andy Cortez. Good afternoon, Gregory. Good afternoon to you, Andre Andreas. Andres. Andres. A lot of people made fun of me because it was it sounded like undress. Undress. Like undress. That's just, I mean, they're being racist. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> they're making fun of how you pronounce your name authentically. Oh, you know okay. What I mean? Yeah, sure. Don't take that shit. Throw it right in. The, you, you, you've seen, I didn't the, you've take seen how shit. the internet works. I didn't Throw take it right in their face. Racist. Do it. It'll Let's shut them up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do something. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for joining me, Andy, on Historic Kind of Funny Games Daily. This is the first time in over 70 episodes I have not worn a shirt and tie. I'm wearing the new, brand new Kind of Funny Games Daily t-shirt available at kindoffunny.com slash store. Thank you for your I support. designed this shirt, everybody. Very true, too. And I would love it if you bought it and showed them that I am worth the hire. That is true. That would be helpful. So, that is true. You designed this thing back here, too. I did, yeah. We don't talk, call out enough the of the sides stuff you too. do, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, these things. You did this. You made these with your own two hands, I think. Front logo, not designed by me, but I changed the color scheme totally. So kind of yours. You know the color scheme was totally green. It was like lots of different greens. Mm. I was like, nah. No, I mean, you weren't a fan of that? Yeah. Well, that's mean, why you got it. You got the eye. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't have that eye. Well, Zach I mean. Silver is phenomenal. Sure. Of course. Yeah, great, yeah. great designer. All right. Well, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about then we jump in answer your questions give some perspective hang out with you the best friends if you like that you can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games but remember we don't look at the chat while we record it live instead if you're watching live your job is to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up just the facts ma'am we don't want you editorializing there. If you have questions, concerns, you want to talk about the show, be part of a segment, you, no matter when or where you're watching, need to go to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Then you get put into the show later. It can be posted later, of course, on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get the show, thank you for your love and support. Remember, housekeeping, there's a new Cooking with Greggy up right now on Patreon and YouTube. Of course, last one, if you don't give us any money over on Patreon, if you give us a dollar, you get early access to the shows. Now, the Ribs is up on YouTube, which could be new to you if you're not a patron. Love it if you went and supported that. And then, of course, remember, Extra Life is a thing that is still happening here, November 4th, 24 hours of live streaming, crazy shenanigans, events, games, fun times with you. You can join the Kind of Funny team for Extra Life over at kindoffunny.com slash extra life. Or if you don't want to play and raise money for sick kids, you can just go donate money and help us raise money and play games. And for I get sick to kids. cut Greg's hair. Kindoffunny.com slash extra life. That is a... not what I remember I thought being you were cutting goals. Joey's hair. No, but oh. jo the thing is, like, it's going to be so hard to see what I do to Joey's hair because her hair is long. Yeah. Just make but, it like yours. You mean you're going to shave it. You're just going to cut my Give me a haircut. Yeah, I'm going to give yeah, you a haircut. Okay, okay, no, okay. no, no. I'm not going to shave your head. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to like give you a legitimate haircut. I'm and still down if we get to 100,000, which is our goal, that I'll, I'll bleach my hair and dye it blue again. For how okay. long, though? That sounds great. I don't know. I got nothing to do. Until <laughs> I got until nothing going on. on. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I got blue you can be like around. a true twitcher. Exactly. Twitch what's up, everybody? It's Sniper Rifle Shotgun. Hey, guys, what's up? We're playing some PUBG today. I was gonna like Joey's here to yell, too. Joey says... Joey wants me to cut all of her hair wow. super short. Wow. I yeah. could pixie cut or how short? I mean, like, here. Oh, she, well, she's doing, like, a bob cut, so, like, chin length. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Okay. okay. We'll figure it out. Actually, I'll, I'll kill it either November way. November 4th, right around the corner. Please be a part of it. Very confident. Please be excited. For now, please be excited for what is and forever will be. The Roper Report. Time for some news. Well, I got competing, competing news, son. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Nice job. Number one, it popped over the weekend, but it's pretty gosh darn big. Neo Gaff is still down as of when I compiled this. I was just on the morning show. I don't know if Gaff's been put back up. But Neo Gaff was down this morning at least still. Check out All your weekend. Phone. Check your phone. I don't have my phone's bored. Oh, you, you dropped it in the dropped shower. Dropped it in the what shower. What a weird place to drop your phone. Well, I put it on the top of the doorway area or whatever to listen to my podcasts. Neo and Gaff's still down. Fell in the shower, fell face down, picked it up, and I was like, oh, everything's good. About two hours later, it just started restarting. No, that's not good. Very Neo sad. Gaff is down. It's been down all weekend. Why sexual harassment allegations? Let's kick it over to Glixel who's reporting. Popular gaming forum NeoGAF is offline following allegations of sexual assault against site owner Tyler, parentheses, Evilor, 
Malka. The site currently lists an error and a note that it is down for site maintenance. Many of the site's moderators left the site in protest following the current allegations. Glixel has reached out to Malka for comment, but has not received a reply at this time. Saturday night, someone posted screen captures on NeoGAF of a Facebook post that detailed an incident in which a woman said that a man she was friends with had shocked her by getting into the shower with her completely naked. After friends asked her to name the man, she told them to, quote unquote, Google Evilor. In the wake of the post, members started protesting Evil or on NeoGAF, and many of the moderators quit. The site was taken offline shortly after the protest started. It has been going on and offline over the past 12 hours. Like I said, though, this has been written over the weekend, and it is still down to this day. Uh, this isn't the first time Malka has faced allegations of sexual assault. In 2012, Malka wrote about a trip to Spain in which he grabbed a woman after buying her a drink. Quote, I laugh because drinks here were all... Uh, I'm sorry. I laughed because drinks here were all of two euros, he wrote at the time, as shown in the screen cap, uh, but consented and then grabbed her ass hard to show her that I wasn't being taken advantage of. And she thought better of treating me as a mark and left without taking her drinks. NeoGAF started in 2004 as a spinoff of the forums located on, a ga on gaming site Gaming Age, which was the original GAF. Over time, it became home to a wide variety of gaming discussions, which often included participants who were game developers and journalists. Uh, I've added in here US Gamer reports that there, there is a statement from the company supposedly incoming. That was posted, from what I understand, reading, uh, there's been so many different articles about this, was posted by well, somebody who was a mod or was one of the mods that was exiting saying, hey, they're working on a statement, something will be up, but insane. All around. I mean, there's so many different ways of how crazy this is in the way that, number one, it's gaff, which in my entire career has been, oh, it's gaff. That's where you if that's where people go that are like the most into games that are that's where the leaks start. That's where the rumors start that are going to have something behind them. Everyone knows NeoGAF is like this well of information. The fact that literally in less than a day it all crumbled or it went down into this spot that it is now completely closed down no one's knows what's going on it's crazy of course that the whole you know we talked about on game over greggy show we talked about it here obviously too with the david ballard naughty dog stuff but like the harvey weinstein stuff of like you know how that is shaken popular opinion in general about what's going on with sexual harassment uh, sexual assault and from what I understand, the Facebook post was spurred on by the Me Too movement, which, of course, originates with the Weinstein stuff coming out. Right. It's crazy to see every form of entertainment affected. It's crazy to see on GAF, the, from what I understand, it was this surface threads started getting deleted. I, I And I'm, I'm putting myself out there. From what I understand, threads started getting deleted, I think, by Evil Lord, but I could be wrong. And then it just got so out of control with people posting about it, being upset about it. The mods saying they're leaving, which then led to anarchy on the site that they yeah closed, just turned it off. I did read somewhere that some mods were aware of it and were hiding it or you know protecting that information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was just like sort of he says she says bullshit. Yeah, Limp Bizkit song. And of course, what a yeah. great song. Um, but um, yeah, that stuff. That's one thing that I couldn't really figure out if that was true or not. Right. And and then so. In protest, apparently some other mods who were not aware of this, that were just finding out this news, that the news is being protected, similar to how some of the the, the closest people to Weinstein were, they knew about stuff, but they sure. just didn't mention anything. Yeah, um, yeah, it's awful, man. I mean, I, it's, it's, obviously all this stuff is awful, but it, I think it's, this could be the turning point in where some of this stuff stops happening, where yeah. enough people... Enough women, uh, even a few guys or whatever, have enough confidence to speak up about it, and that hopefully this is a t big turning point in history. But well, yeah, you'd hope, right, that the I don't want to say silver lining because this is such a shitty situation. Oh right? yeah, but the the good that can come out of this is the people actually seeing their actions and them confronting their demons on this right like you know this poor woman's felt like she couldn't say this for the longest time her coming out and saying it right is actually having repercussions it is you know for the longest time i think when you talk we talk about sexual assault uh uh allegations something like the sexual harassment the when even when we talked on the on the game over gregor show about it right the concern always for uh, a victim coming forward whether it be male female um other is the fact that 
is somebody going to believe it? Will it actually affect change? Will anything go on? And now we are in this moment in time, it seems, where no, it does. Like this coming out does do this. It does change. It does change the, for Gaff even, the ability of like, okay, well, the people who are and the moderators of it are going to leave, which then leads to anarchy, which then leads to this. And like, it's going to be very fascinating to see what their statement is. I'm, and I'm not, I, I pop into Gaff. Uh, I've talked about it on Kind of Funny Games Daily. I pop into Gaff every day since we started the show. Cause again, Gaff is usually the pulse of like, it's collected, it's boiled down. What are the big news stories to make sure I don't miss anything? What's going on? It's this interesting thing of, I don't know the inner workings of it. You know, I don't know. I've never heard of Evil or I couldn't tell you before yeah, the statement here. who owns Gaff. I'm not sure how much he's involved in it. Like, what is it? Just he owns it? Is it going to be, the, is that the thing now? So like, if you, you have to, like, is it's not like the Weinstein Corporation, right? Where we've thrown him off the board of directors. We've gotten rid. Now, granted, his name's attached to it. So you're never getting away from that with that. But it's not, I don't know if there is a way to cut this out. You know what I mean? To say, all right, well, we're distancing ourselves from that. If it is him. Where do you go with that? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it is only him. I do know. I I read a few tweets again. Like a lot of people just talk shit, and you know, it could yeah, be none tough. of it could be true. But I did read a tweet that said, like he could have apparently he could have sold Gaff a year or two ago for like ten million dollars, and oh, he wow. declined it. Yeah, uh, in hopes for a better offer. And now it's just all gone or whatever. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And so it does seem like it is more attached to him than to any of the mods or any of the admins. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know what percentage of the ownership is his, um, but it does sound like it is majority of evil or Malka or whatever his name is. Yeah. Malka is his real name. Um, obviously crazy. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, there's nothing much we can do. This is, and this is the problem, even with the, uh, David Bauer, naughty dog stuff, right? Even with the Weinstein stuff where it is similar to what you're saying. Well, right now it's just, she said, right. And I feel like the fact that there isn't a statement yet, I feel like the fact the site is down is damning. You know oh, sure. I mean? The fact that like what they're talking about here of this story from Spain has been around. I had never known this from 2012, but I mean, I, I saw that getting kicked around in every article that that was already out there, that that had happened. And uh, it's like and for, in his own words, too. Yeah, so. exactly. So it's like, <clears throat> I don't know what the takeaway from all this is. I do think it's interesting. Hard to look innocent when well, exactly. stuff like that's already but then, out like, there. What does what happens to Gaff now? And then wh even if it outside of the woman in on Facebook coming out and being like, I made it all up or whatever, which I don't think is the case. And I don't I, I don't understand how Neo Gaff won't be drastically affected, if not ended based on this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see how I think you're you've lost a giant segment of that community now because Neo Gaff has been very vocal about like right being progressive and being on these issues. I would say that they're gone. So like now, where is the hub? Is it Reddit gaming? Is it somewhere else? Is it I think a Twitter? Good, I think a good portion of the admins and mods that were really active on that in that community will eventually start something else up. Yeah. Um, I don't think it'll go to Reddit. I think they'll try to like keep it, you know, homey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it with their own friends. And cause I'm sure those, I mean, similar to how a lot of the kind of funny best friends have forged relationships. I'm sure that's how that's pretty much a majority of Good admins point. and mods on yeah, there yeah. and users as well. So, yeah. uh, I feel like they'll probably start their own thing. Uh, I saw a tweet from Nibel, uh, Nibelian on Twitter. He, um, Neo Neo .com is a it, it links you to like the best trash talking from Batista from 2003 to 2014. What I have no hell? idea okay, why. All right. I don't know why. I don't yeah, get the yeah. joke, but I just thought that was a weird tidbit. Yeah. No, oh, thank you. That's a good thing yeah. to talk about. <laughs> so yeah, developing story. I know a lot of people want us to talk about it. Uh, we have and to dr drive home the message of kind of funny sexual harassment and sexual assault is wrong. Don't do it to people. Don't be shitty. Don't violate people's things because your comeuppance will come apparently. Mm -hmm. And it's if you've been uh, sexually assaulted, sexually harassed, of course, talk to someone about it. Do not live in shame. Uh, you know, talk to a therapist, talk to your friends, talk to your family, uh, do what you have to do kind of thing. You're not alone. Number and two. There is no other side to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. A lot of people that way. Like there was a, on our Reddit, it was like, oh man, I wonder if they'll talk about this. I'm like, well, yeah, but it's just like, I don't know what to say other than man, you can't get away with this. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. No one should be able to just get away with being an asshole. <coughs> It'd be interesting. How, are you dying still? You're sick of dying? Or are you, yeah. No, I'm def I feel, I don't have the head pain anymore, but now I have this like Mucus scratchy ass throat. Oh, yeah. Number two, 
Lego Dimensions is officially dead. Uh, we've talked about it twice on Kind of Funny Games Daily. First off, the old school, I think it was Brick and Choir article about like, hey, we've heard then recently Eurogamer had more stuff of like, yeah, it's dead, but there was no statement and there was the rumor that there'd be no statement. Today, Lego Dimensions posted the following on Twitter. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, TT Games, and the Lego Group would like to thank fans for their ongoing support of LEGO Dimensions. After careful consideration, we will not be producing new expansion packs for the game beyond what is now available. We will continue to provide ongoing server and customer support for all LEGO Dimensions packs. Existing packs will continue to work interchangeably and will remain available for purchase. Not unexpected. I think this statement's the most unexpected thing of like, I think we had, writing was on the wall. There had been enough scuttlebutt on the inside, but here we are. There had been it. enough delay between releases that you kind of felt that they yeah, were. Yeah, you saw, you saw it start tapering them, off, yeah. and when people started explaining it, you understood it too. Uh, the one and only Trevor Starkey writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, A moment of silence for the official announcement that Lego Dimensions won't be receiving that short circuit level pack Greg wanted, or the Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Fast and Furious team packs Joey Noel and I once dreamt up. It was a wonderfully charming game that put so much care into its design and the properties it worked with. I hope TT Games is able to continue capturing that spirit in their future games as they always have. So yes. Rest in peace. Fare thee well. Lego mm -hmm. Dimensions. You were a great time. Your content after year one though and yeah, I mean, it kind of pittered out there. You know what I mean? I still have those memories of like watching you all in Extra Life at sure. the apartment. Yeah. Building that set where Tim was on the floor asleep and it was like you and Kevin, I think, were the only ones awake. Yeah, sounds right. Me and Kevin did a whole bunch of Lego Dimension content. Yeah. We loved it. But they made they picked bad story packs. That was what killed them. Mm -hmm. And they had a bad trophy layout, which I bitched all the time to them about, but then they put it on Sony and I'm like, I get you. Fucking PlayStation as usual. <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida cackling in his tower. Anyways, number three. Animal Crossing is getting a mobile direct tomorrow. That's right, a Nintendo direct tomorrow about Animal Crossing mobile. Uh, Nintendo's official statement says, tune in October 24th at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern for a roughly 20 minute Animal Crossing mobile direct video presentation. There will be no updates on any other topics, including other mobile, Nintendo Switch, or Nintendo 3DS software. <laughs> Let's get it out there first. Just one. heads up, <laughs> do not get excited. It's just going to be this thing. This is fascinating because as the years, as the time has gotten shorter and shorter in the window of 2017, there had been so much talk about, hey, back in the day when they announced Mario, right, that they were doing Mario, they're going to do an Animal Crossing mobile thing. But they were supposed to have more news. They were supposed to tell us something. Uh, it was what? I think it was Polygon I stole from of like they put or I found this or whatever because I'd forgotten. Nintendo had pushed back the launch of the Animal Crossing mobile game and saying it wouldn't come out until sometime after March 2018. But there was still supposed to be news this year. It's nice to see they actually did it. But this is also Nintendo being Nintendo, right? Uh, like, who's hey. who's the mobile company? The uh, kind of it's funny. Not ten, it's not Tencent. I forgot the name of the mobile company. That's working on this game? Well, I mean, just the, the the mobile team that Nintendo teamed up with. The one who brought oh, you a Super Mario Run. No, I don't remember that. I forgot what they were called. Kindoffunny.com yeah. slash you're wrong. You can tell us. Let us know. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting they're actually shouting this out and getting it there. Um, I'm, I'll be fascinated to see what it actually is. Shane writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, What's up, guys? Short one today. With the Animal Crossing Direct announced this week, when do you think the game will be released? How expensive do you think it'll end up being? Thanks. Keep up the awesome work. Expansive. Right? How expansive do you think it'll be? Yeah, sorry. Good call. Um, remember me, Tomo? Yeah. I think it'll be similar to that. Yeah, me too. I think you're walking around. You're, you're, I don't know if you, if you will be uh, in your own neighborhood like you are in the original video games. Yeah, yeah. Or if you can maybe create a neighborhood with friends, head over... Sell them some shit. I would. I go listen to the little dog play guitar. I wouldn't be surprised if they were dropping you into a neighborhood, but then also like, all right, twelve people can live in a neighborhood. You're getting dropped in with eleven other randos, and then oh, maybe okay. there is a way to move in with your friends or start a private evict thing. evict somebody. Yeah, everybody votes. It's like tribal <laughs> plant, council. Plant drugs in their house and have the. But police that's the thing, them. right? Of how basic that'll be. Of like, all right, every house starts with a different tree, and like you have, you're growing your fruit and go trade it with your friends or do this or take it to the marketplace. But I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be full blown Animal Crossing because that's coming to Switch one day, and I can't fucking wait. Really? Because I like You're the, I like Animal Crossing. Yeah, I like Animal Crossing. A lot. I, I I feel like I put in at least fifteen hours on the 3ds version. Yeah. Because uh, it was just 
I remember buying it when I was going back home for Christmas, and three of my other close friends had it. Yeah. And they were all, all about. So I was like, you know, I got to get this shit. And yeah. it was one of those like right on the spot purchases sure. that I just went to the store and, and bought it. Yeah, I, had, I, had, I guess I had a fun time with it, but I don't have this like huge pass with Animal Crossing. I never gave a shit about it. See, I, I, I gave a shit about it starting with GameCube. Where it's like we had it and we had a house of seven guys and so like we all lived in a town so mm. the, the people who are playing like you're all playing on the same gamecube somebody goes to work somebody else picks it up and you see what they've put on the, the thing or what they've done with their house uh, or how they've like okay. been leaving messages around there and that was cool i was more of a sims player and then when three oh, okay and then when yeah. 3ds did hit it you know it, it's all about if you have a group into it and at ign there was a huge group into it so mm. it was you came in every day and see what brian had built in his basement or what the new expansion <laughs> i never got into it like him and audrey and all these other people did but like how many bodies were in the cellar in Exactly. Yeah. How many people have been chained up? Where Tom Nook's children were. You know what I mean? Jesus. He's a slave driver. Real dark you side know, story. You know, <laughs> nobody likes that Tom Nook. He's a bad guy. You know that much. Number four. Uh, Rockstar says Grand Theft Auto V didn't need single player DLC. This is according to an interview with Game Informer where Imran Sarwar, who is Rockstar director and design, uh, spoke to Game Informer about everything that's been happening. It's a really interesting read because it's really about GTA Online and like how that thing went from not being that great to being this force nobody can stop, which we're trying to play. I got your, I got an email for you about that. Yeah. When I was in here. Good, good. Anyways, over there, Imran. Am I saying that right? You think? Imran? Yeah, Imran. Imran says, quote, with GTA 5, the single player game was absolutely massive and very, very complete. It was three games in one. The next gen versions took a year of everyone's time to get right. And then the online component had a lot of potential, but to come close to realizing that potential also sucked up a lot of resources. And then, there are the other games, in particular Red Dead Redemption 2. The combination of these three factors means for this game, we did not feel single player expansions were either possible or necessary, but we may well do them for future projects. This, uh, I remember being confused by this, the possibility of single player DLC. Yeah. Uh, because there was a, I feel like after a year the game came out, uh, the guy who plays Franklin yeah. posted a photo of him like here at Rockstar in the mocap suit mm -hmm. and everybody was of course the first thing that hits your mind is like oh they're doing single player DLC yeah. hell yeah like this is gonna be awesome and then nothing happened and I feel like some maybe something was made but they decided to can it because sure. they have money and they can just do whatever the well, fuck they want. I think it is that, you know, to, I, I, again, I encourage everybody to go to Game Informer and read their GTA Online piece. And then IGN has, I think it's IGN UK, has, or maybe it's AU, has uh, an article up too as another interview. I guess there was just Rockstar that made the rounds about it of like how GTA Online went from being like nothing and it wasn't doing great to being fucking hand over fist money. And I think that is the tale where I wouldn't be surprised if it was, oh, they bring in Franklin's actor's name, who I forget, and I know, Sean. They bring in Sean, right? And they're like, hey, do this, do that, Sean Fontaine. Hey, we'll do all these different things, great. And then it was like, as that's happening, GTA Online's in the background, climbing, climbing, climbing. And they're like, well, let's mm. get more resources to that. Oh, let's work on next gen. And by the time that small team that was prototyping, working on whatever they thought it was going to be, they get back to it, maybe. And then also, I, he, did Franklin ever make a crossover into GTA Online? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. It could have just been one of those story missions. Yeah, because I, I was surprised. Like, So we talked about it on <clears throat> Gamescast that's available now, obviously. YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Or maybe games. Uh, games. Maybe it was actually on this morning show uh, when we were talking to me and Tim. And, yeah, it was because it was just me and him. Uh, but we were like, Tim was like, we really do need to play GTA Online. We need to get into this. We need to do that. So I got everybody codes and I uh, started playing really briefly. But I was surprised too of like, coming off the plane after creating my character, uh, Franklin's buddy, whose name I don't recall yeah. at all, meets me up and he's all voice acting, gets me in the car. I'm like, oh, right. Like, this is like a fleshed out story in quotes of like this for my, you know, career. Yeah, there, character. Are, there are tons of missions where you go to a certain house and he's like, hey, you're going to get the drugs from so-and-so. You're going to get this car though and then go and then like, so, I mean, I guess what I compare it to now is like in Destiny where you have sure. your smaller story missions and then the heists are like your raids. So those are the more involved uh, gameplay, but right. yeah, they have smaller story missions with full voice acting, full mocap, and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I put in a lot of hours on Xbox One, and uh, and hopefully, how, yeah, when how we, many hours do you, you did put in? Shit, maybe I'd say around maybe thirty. Oh wow, okay, thirty or forty, because my friends and I played. Uh, because you get in there and you expect to do missions, but a lot of time you just end up fucking around forever, yeah. and it's just so fun and. I've laughed so hard playing that game. And I think I can't wait to see to like revisit my character from Xbox. Yeah. Because I have him still saved over there. He had like a hot pink blazer. Yeah. It was yeah, dope, nice. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It was tight. Well, it's funny starting mine up or whatever. Like, you know, I haven't touched it since it launched or whatever. 
and like i mean like launch launch on play, playstation 3 and so like kicking on and getting into the world and like my ign tag popped up I'm like oh man this is old this is <laughs> yeah a, this I, is a time capsule for that was the the crew or whatever i was in on the rockstar social club yeah um i logged in because i had to log in in order to at least link my psn account as well so now i have like Twitter, Xbox Live, and PSN all linked up to my same account. Now it's just a matter of transferring over the character. But on the Xbox, I saw, like, I'm in the Kind of Funny crew back from, like, 2015 oh, wow. or whatever. Yeah. And there's a bunch of screenshots uh, of people, like, taking photos with their car with the smiley face on the hood. And Juan Lara had a few photos on there. And Juan, his name is uh, Overflow ENT on Twitter. Uh, and I met him at, like, RTX when we met you guys for the first time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know he was in the crew. Like, that's so that's, awesome. that's so weird. Yeah, that's really cool. like taking selfies in front of like your hot blue car. And yeah, it's fucking gotta, awesome. Get a car and pimp it up. Yeah. Andy, I want to play Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm -hmm. I oh, hope I there's single player DLC for that because, of course, Undead Nightmare was so great. But maybe Red Dead on Redemption 2's online will be so great. I won't need to look at missions there. Battle of the Gate Tony. Ballad of Gate Tony was great. And Grand mm -hmm. Theft Auto 4, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, I like Lost and Dam better, I think, but I know I'm in the minority on that. Yeah, I like Ballad I was a big Sun, Tony Sons of Anarchy fan, oh, so I was just gotcha. into that. You know, it was different. And played, I digress. You were in the in the zeitgeist at that time. Exactly, of course. If I, I'd like to play Red Dead, it's not out yet. If I want to know what games are out today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every week. Yeah. Out today. Job Simulator is getting a free update called Infinite Overtime. That oh. has some new modes and stuff. And it also sees a permanent price drop to 20 bucks on PlayStation VR. Made in Austin, Texas. Really? Yeah. If you haven't picked it up yet, it's awesome. You should totally get that, especially 20 bucks. Uh, Ghost Story comes to PC, and High Hell comes to PC as well. No? I don't know. No, never heard of them. Uh, new dates? Dragon Ball Fighter Z set for release in America in the Americas on January 26, 2018. Uh, there is now going to be a Super NES 3DS Oh, I see saw this. 3DS XL that comes with Super Mario Kart. It's going to be uh, available on or as, on uh, November 27th. Uh, it looks cool. It's got the. It's gray. It's I like the, the Famicom thing. one more. Did you see yeah, that one? You're a jerk. I mean, that's what that one's been out for a while. Jerk. Like the. No, I know. Uh, rainbow color. Sure. Prefer it more. Be careful. This is the usual one that doesn't come with a power adapter because they just assume <laughs> you've had a new 3DS, I guess. Uh, and then 13 original Xbox games are coming to Xbox One backwards compatibility tomorrow. Uh, if you still have your original Xbox disc, just insert it into your Xbox One console. If you own it digitally, that will also work. Many of these games can also be purchased from the Xbox store in digital form for 10 bucks. This all comes from IGN. I believe they have the exclusive on this. The 13 games, Andy. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, mm. Ninja Guide in Black, Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge, Fus Fusion Frenzy, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Psychonauts, mm. Dead to Rights, Black, Grabbed by the Ghoulies, Sid Meier's Pirates, Red Faction 2, Blood Rain 2, and King of Fighters, Neo Wave. Any of that? Black. Yeah, Black. Remember? Remember that one. Uh, do you remember that one? That was a big... Oh, the bullet sounds That so was good. like, we don't have a... I, wait, wasn't Black... I could have sworn... Because I remember playing Red Faction, the first one, when mm -hmm. I didn't when I didn't have access to Halo. Yeah. Because like, I didn't have an Xbox at the time. Sure. But I was like, this is my Halo for now. Yeah. And I remember Black Camp coming out, and wasn't that the one where you could do like 50 player, multi it had like a lot of multiplayer. I remember, the only reason I remember Black, because I didn't play it on Xbox One, was the, or on the original Xbox, is the fact that I think Roper was always, we, when we talk about shooters, you always talk about how good it sounds. Sound they, they made a great you know, uh, deal about sound design. Interesting. Yeah, for me, I mean, out of this list, right, the ones that speak to me, I love Dead to Rights back in the day. Uh, Psychonauts, obviously, is great, uh, but you can play it a million places. Red Faction 2, of course, yeah, let's, I remember playing that on PS2 of like, let's shoot through the walls, and this is so crazy and cool. And, yeah. all stuff. and then Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Come the fuck on. Well, yeah, that was one of the reasons I got an Xbox One. Well, here's my original Xbox. God, that's here's my weird. problem with it. Um, and I was talking over the weekend to Barrett and our friend Griffin about it, where um, when KOTOR came out, I immediately I started it up and I was like, you know what? I don't love turn base. Mm. And I was just like, fuck, if this was anything but turn base, if this was like Force Unleashed or or a Jedi Power Battles, remember sure. that shit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like. I know the story's incredible. I know that's one of the best games that Bioware has made, but I just could not get into the... It's been so long since I played it. I don't remember... I guess it is turn-based, right? Because what it was is that you choose your attacks and they, you can stack them, though, right? Yeah. I thought I remember yeah. like spamming lightsabers and it would just be lightsaber over time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Not my cup of tea. 
But now I could go for a cup of tea right now with my throat, though. Go make. I want. We have a cool Greg making one. Nah, nah. Do we even have tea bags? I don't, I don't think so. Don't <laughs> we got coffee for sure. You drink coffee. Time for reader mail. This is where you write in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. You ask questions, we give you our attempts at answers. Let's start with Jonathan R. Jonathan R. writes in and says, "Why does the? I'm sorry. Why does the entire games media industry seem to give every benefit of the doubt to game developers?" The entire discussion surrounding the closing of Visceral Studios from IGN, GameStop, Game Informer, he says GameStop, but he probably means GameSpot, Game Informer, Kind Funny, etc., has almost entirely been demonizing of EA, has almost entirely demonizing of EA, that's a bad sentence, and assuming that the Star Wars game they canceled would have been perfect spiritual successor to Star Wars 1313, and that Amy Hennig's connection to it meant that there was no way the game could have been anything less than spectacular. EA statement didn't help that perception, but how does that guarantee that the game would actually have been good? Simply because Amy is associated with the game doesn't mean it's going to be exceptional. Just ask Peter, just as Peter Molyneux's name didn't make his most recent games as good as people hoped. This seems to be a reoccurring theme with the media, as every time a game comes out with a negative aspect to it, most recently loot boxes, the narrative immediately becomes, quote, I can't believe the publisher would force this on the poor developer and their beautiful artistic vision, end quote. I don't work in the industry, but it does seem like the media is hell-bent on giving developers every benefit of the doubt and assuming the worst of publishers. Why is that the case? And how can assuming one party is always the hero and the other is always the villain be good for gamers and the games industry? Thanks, Jonathan R. No, Jonathan R. I mean, you nail uh, a big point of this argument. And I think, I mean, and I'm not, I've been on the internet now for going on 11 years this uh, spring. I've been using it for like 20 years. Fucking yeah. 20, you know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. And it's the fact of like, I got a thick skin, don't get me wrong. <coughs> but the amount of people last week screaming that I was a corporate apologist because I was trying to give you the other side, the, literally this side. And I'm not saying I'm dying on this hill with you, Jonathan R. But I was the guy last week of like when Tim came in and handed us the sheet. Andrea Renee said, oh my God, it's because they want to do games as services. And I said, oh my God, this game was off the rails. It's perception, it's whatever. And I think it's always, I mean, what you're talking about is right. I think that the, the well is poisoned for EA. It's similar to what we talked about on this show, right? When somebody wrote in and it was the Jason Schreier tweets of like, no, the game's a hot mess and investors don't want to hear that. But why didn't the statement say that? Because investors don't want to hear that. EA knows they can take it on the chin. EA already is the villain in every scenario, but EA does make money hand over fist on games. So... What does it matter if there's just more people on the internet mad at EA but still wanting to support a game and want to do this? I think it's a. I think it's a. You raise an interesting thing, and I. I think it is the fact that it's what Gary was talking about, right? And just the fact that it's art versus business, and it's so much easier to believe that business is ruining the art when, in re reality, how many creative endeavors go don't go the right way and don't do what you want them to be? I would love. I can't wait to hear what happened with this game. The truth about it. Uh, and uh, here, here's an interesting thing I was thinking about. What? When will we find out the truth about this game? The, like the real truth. Yeah. Uh, will we find out the truth about this or Kojima and Konami? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like the inside stories that I really want to know. Yeah. Yeah. The it's of course we want to assume that this game would have been incredible, and it's the single player open world Star Wars game that we've always wanted. Uh, I always. When I heard that it was being made, I was like, this is going to be Mass Effect with the Star Wars skin, and I cannot be more excited about it. I was thinking it was going to be Uncharted, right? Uncharted with a Star Wars skin. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. I guess it could have been more linear. I, I just felt like, well, that's you know, what they're every, saying. every game is going to be... I feel like every game has some open-world aspect to it nowadays. Like, it, If it's not single-player... I feel like only Naughty Dog is really the team that can make a linear, non-open-world game and sure. kind of get away with it. Otherwise, it's sort of seen as being lazy, almost. Like, if it's, it's no, not open, it's, if it's not open world, you know. Well, this this game was going to be. I mean, people were throwing around linear about this in a negative sense, right? And I think that it's just linear has another stigma to it, where people think it is like, all right, cool, I'm walking down a hallway this entire game, and it's like that's not at all what it is, right? Sure. Uncharted, uh, go no, it's called an abyss. Uncharted. Uh, the, no, the Lost was, Legacy. Lost Legacy, right, is a linear title, but there is that open world segment. Yeah. Of go around and do what you want. And like that's a way to mix it in. Not to mention that Uncharted in general, Uncharted 4, yeah, is a linear game, but there are things to the right and things to the left that you you won't see if you just walk down one path if you do this whole thing. 
I'm, in, I'm interested to see what they do. Like, I know that they were talking about, hey, but they're still going to use the all the a lot of the art assets. Don't worry about it, guys. Yeah, it's like, uh, that doesn't. Sound, yeah, that doesn't like sound the new well. studio working on that is going to want to. That's like a zombie. That's like a Frankenstein. Project, yeah, right? like, you never want to do that as a yeah. game developer. Like, you want your you want ownership over what you're trying to create. So, right. and that's it, where I think you know it's going to be a weird give and take when you talk about writing a video game. Uh, I think that's one of the things, and you've heard I've heard other writers talk about this, right? Where Greg Rucka, uh, you know him, comic book writer? No. He wrote uh, Siphon Filter. I want to say it was the PSP game. I want to say it was the last one, which would have been kind of like that conversation wrong. That's Logan Shadow? Or was Logan Shadow first and then whatever? He wrote one of the PSP games. And I remember interviewing him at a Comic Con about it leading up to it. And I was like, so how does this work? And he's like, they told me that I, you know, I could tell whatever story I wanted, but I needed to have an underwater level. Like that, they had they had built this tech of like scuba diving or whatever, and they oh. wanted to use that, so I had to use that. And it's like that's the game was great. The writing was actually really well. Like Siphon Filter, both those PSP games I loved a lot. And I think it was Logan Shadow's second one, but I, that doesn't sound right anymore. Doesn't matter. I digress. Uh, those are like the little things you get, right? So now imagine you're the writer up at the new EA studio that's getting this. I'm like, cool, here's all this stuff. You can tell the story you want to tell in the Star Wars universe, but they've built Tatooine. 80% and built is this. it on that Tatooine. Exactly. Like, you have to figure out how to make that work. It has to be on Coruscant, and there's a lot of Gungans. Another oh, thing to Jonathan R's question, why does the entire games industry seem to give every benefit of the doubt to game developers? Those are the people we know. Go, like I, when I when someone's working on a game, and I don't even mean people like how I know Mitch. I mean like the way that when you have somebody come by and up at noon, it's the developer. You're interfacing with the developer. The developers are telling you this. You're interviewing them at E3. You're seeing them at PAX. You're talking to them about this. So it's so much easier of not to say your personal relationship skewing that, but you know the person like you know how Gary well, on on Friday show somebody wrote in and Gary gave this impassioned speech when they were like should we be worried about EA like going forward and, and Gary's like I'm not worried about EA at all like fuck you know fuck them it's about the worried people about the who people, just lost yeah. their jobs and did all this stuff that's the big part of it and somebody wrote into you're wrong eventually like I'm with you Gary but remember people work at EA too you don't know that though EA seems like this corporate powerhouse, you know, if you want to, evil thing that just comes in and cuts games and goes away. And, like, we don't know who's doing that. We don't know. And granted, you have a Sutherland or whatever putting out a statement, but you, I couldn't pick him out of a crowd of people, a lineup of people, five people. And I don't have a personal relationship. But when you, I, it is Amy, right? It's fucking Amy. I've known Amy my entire career. And it's like, fuck, I just want to play another Amy game. Like, get it out. What's going on? But, again, that's me being like, I know what she makes and I know that I love it. But it's like, well... Was the game off track? I don't know. And I'm not saying that is the case. And like when I was getting called a corporate apologist all last week, it's like, I'd like to think you listen to the show because you want a perspective of somebody who's been in the industry. So yeah, games and services is a big thing. There is this issue of like this, and it is the issue of people have to make money and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying those are the hills I'd die on. If I had fucking unlimited money, you're goddamn right. I'd be like, hey, Amy, make a fucking game. Here yeah. you go. See you later. Free reign. Do it. Thing. Fucking destroy it. Make, give me something because I know how fucking talented you are. I want to play that game. Yeah, I, I give benefit of the doubt to developers because I know that, you know, on the art side of stuff, on the creative side of things, these are people that are pouring their hearts into these things. And they... You've worked with them. You were a developer. If any of you think that, like, these developers are making these games... And I'm talking about the people on the ground floor, not the people in the fucking corner offices, you know, like, at EA. I'm talking about the people, like, that are crunching for hours and hours a week, like, yeah. working 70-hour weeks. Who are missing their children's soccer yeah. games, not seeing their spouses, getting home when their kids are in bed. None, Again, why we pull for them. These people making the games are not thinking, <laughs> like, I want to fuck over these fans. 100%. And, like, they are they are pouring their hearts into these, not into to these mention, projects. And not to mention, for the most part, unless, and because uh, where we are now with games, I don't think a developer is usually working on a game being like, this thing sucks. I'm going to half ass it. You no. know I mean? They're trying the hardest they can to do this stuff. It was, um, fuck, I don't remember his name, but he came on up at noon a long time ago to talk about. Peggle, I want to think, and he had worked on a bunch of stuff, and he had been done a bunch of different games. And I talked to him about that, and, and maybe I'm, I don't think I'm misquoting him, but it was the idea of like he had worked on some other dumb licensed cashing game or whatever, not cashing, but not not a game people were expecting to be game of the year. Right. And he was like, yeah, you know, like we knew the game wasn't coming together, but that didn't stop me from trying to make my system the best it could possibly be, so that I could be proud of what I created. Let right. alone like the. You know, we're so privileged to be on this side of just being gamers and just playing games and be like, oh, the game sucked and be done with it. Developers aren't like that when, hey, we're hiring a guy who makes System X. You made System X in a shitty game, but 
System X is really good in that game. Yeah. They can see that. They can separate that. They can break it down into you know nuts and bolts. It's like us saying this car's this car sucks when in reality, well the tires are great or this is good or the right. carburetor's fine. It's an interesting argument, and I do think it's it comes down to not personal biases, but just in the fact of we know developers, and that's how it works out in the most part. And it is it is an easier, it is a better narrative of man for us as people who love people who make games to be like that sucks. It was out of the blue, blah blah. blah but probably wasn't. I don't know. You know what I mean? Who knows? Well, One day yeah, we, will. we don't know the true Jason story. Jason Shire will one day tell us the yeah, true story. Hopefully. Uh, let's keep on this train of thought. Not about. Just that, but in Star Wars and everything else that's going on. Barry writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, following up on your conversation about EA and Visceral, you mentioned that, quote, this happening only benefits the indie and that only benefits everybody. This is my argument. And this is like literally Gary and I talking for 20 minutes. And like I say that in there, but like it's not like I wasn't like planting my flag on that. But the idea that triple a if triple a is moving away from single player games right indies will start picking up that slack making cooler things making them faster yada 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 and then we'll see cooler stories there that are turned around quicker wow i understand what you mean i'm afraid i can't fully agree i'm a huge star wars fan and at the end of the day i wanted to play a great story specifically in the star wars world maybe great single player story based indie experiences will rise from the closure of visceral but the fact that is that none of them will be granted the Star Wars license by Lucasfilm. The best talent may go on to make amazing things, but sometimes I want to be told a Star Wars story that's just not, and I'm sorry, and that's just not going to happen on the indie side of the industry. I want to keep this short, so I hope you'll follow my meaning. Keep up the excellent work, Barry. Totally follow your meaning, Barry. I also don't agree. I agree with you, of course, that right now, yeah, they're not going to turn around and go to Cappy and be like, hey, here's Star Wars, make a Star Wars game. Do I, here's my my counterpoint though you want single player games everybody wants single, not everybody people want single player games they go indie these indies start making single player games they start making really great solo games people start noticing that they start winning game of the year they start selling crazy numbers they start doing all this stuff meanwhile at triple a either you assume the games they are making aren't living up to that let's say maybe they aren't doing as well as indie in terms of delivering a story in terms of critical reception in terms of maybe not sales because that's so hard to do if you're a triple a thing but it is the fact of competition benefits everybody when uh 2k nfl when nfl 2k went away and madden was left to do with just madden thing people get mad about it as a wrestling fan i wish somebody was competing with 2k to make them say hey we really need to fucking up the ante on our wwe games what i would say here is if what we're, if if because again this was all just a bleak scenario of like let's say AAA is moving away from single player games if the indie market then ha- goes and picks it up and gets bigger and better about it I don't think it's beyond reason to say I mean Kathleen Kennedy and all these people over at Disney and all these people behind Star Wars that's their whole shtick right is that they see creators doing cool stuff and they want them to go play in the sandbox that they've made and it's like you're talking about you want to get in there you want to play uh, this is back to the question of course that Jonathan just wrote into of like you want this maybe the game that just got canceled wasn't going to be that maybe it wasn't going to live up to Star Wars I love I love Walt Williams and I love Mitch Dyer is the Battlefront 2 campaign going to live up to what everybody wants it to be I don't know I'm super excited I love Janina too like I, I know a whole bunch of people working on that game but until I play it and I'm like yep they fucking nailed it you can't just say oh it was a triple a single player storyline so it's going to be great and it's in Star Wars like you right. have to play that game and see it could be the prequels <laughs> like it, just because it has a Star Wars aim on it doesn't guarantee that it's going to be a good uh, a good project or whatever yeah. um yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I don't have much of a, a viewpoint on this. I feel like competition <laughs> just breeds it where it's like if, okay, maybe I, what, what I'm saying, maybe they won't ever give an indie uh, Star Wars or whatever, but maybe what they would do is like, holy shit, all these indie games keep winning best narrative and keep doing all this stuff and getting all this critical acclaim for Battlefront X for this new Star Wars thing we're going to do. Let's really double down. Let's fucking crush it. Let's make a single player These story because that's what the audience wants. Yeah, let's build a team around this tiny team or whatever. It's the same yeah. thing you know. I always talk about with like, you know, when Tim Schafer and Double Fine launched for uh, Broken Age, which wasn't called that at the time, obviously, but they were like, hey, nobody makes classic adventure games anymore. So we feel like and no, no publisher will give us money for it. So we're going to do it this way. And now classic adventure games aren't everywhere, but there's more of them. Like people saw the success there and reacted to that. Yeah. If people see the success of, man, this game's awesome because of the story, AAA will have to react to that. Greg E writes in, 
And not Greg E, like I game over Greg E. Greg space E. Greg Edwards. And Greg Edwards writes mm-hmm. in and says, Over the weekend, Kotaku reported that the Battlefront 2 campaign is between five and eight hours. There was a lot of complaining that this is too short. I chimed in on the comments stating that, I'm sorry, stating this doesn't seem out of the ordinary for a game that is multiplayer focused. Games like Titanfall 2, Call of Duty, Battlefield, etc. all have about five hour campaigns. People wanted a single player campaign and now they are getting it. People are complaining that, yeah, I'm sorry, people wanted a single player campaign and now that they're getting it, people are complaining that it isn't long enough. What do you think about this? Does five to eight hours seem about right for a game that was never meant to be single player focused? I'd understand the outrage if it was a single player game like Persona or Final Fantasy was reported to only be a fraction of the normal story experience. However, this is a multiplayer game that has a single player story and seems about average. Has a single player story mode and seems about average. And he's talking about the length. It feels like no matter what, people are going to complain even after getting what they complained for originally. Thank God. Greg E. You're, you're happy. Oh, Five yeah. to eight hours? Five to eight hours is like what I wish every single player game was like. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I was telling Greg earlier, I lost about eight hours of South Park yep. gameplay over the weekend because my autosave just didn't work. And uh, f- man, five to eight is just ideal for me. Like, like he mentioned, Titanfall 2. I loved that campaign. And yeah. uh, and the fact that I didn't have to play it for fucking three weeks straight or whatever, that I knocked it out in like a single weekend, that's so ideal. Yeah. Especially, you know, he does make a, a point about, you know, single player is not the the main focus. thing that they're trying to focus on here. Uh, I'm so excited for that. That gives me a lot of hope. I'm happy about that. No, I mean, that. I feel like... I'm totally fine with that. My, my, mainly what I always want it to be is I want the game to be as long as the storyteller developer wants it to be. You hate, doesn't everybody hate it when you're in a game and you feel like you're getting padding? Where it's like, all right, like you're still, I'm going down this hallway now and it's every enemy from the game I got to fight again when I just want to get to the end and fight the boss to see the cuts. <coughs> I feel like this is what I'd want out of this. I want a tight Star Wars story. Like the storyline for Battlefront 2 single player campaign sounds awesome. You know what I mean? Here's the Inferno squad. They've blown up the Death Star. Emperor is dead. Yeah, what the fuck happens then? What does the Empire do when their leaders are de- assassinated by these rebels? It's something, as a casual Star Wars fan, I never really contemplated. It was like, oh, the Death Star blew up again. Everyone's dead. Guess what? Hope springs eternal, and it's a new day for the galaxy. When in reality, there's still a bunch of fucking TIE fighters up there. Or not, yeah, t- yeah. no. Yeah. I mean, just Federation. You yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a bunch of bad guy spaceships up there. <laughs> up there. Yeah, Tie Fighters. Was that Tie Fighter? Wait, oh, X Wing I mean, is what I'm, I'm picturing. An X Wing saying Tie Fighter when I oh, wanted to make sure I was saying Tie no, Fighter. You're right. The yeah. bad guy ship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's still bad guys tie up there. Tie interceptors, really Tie bombers. Exactly. So I no five to eight sounds good. I'd rather that be it. And not to mention, and I know I, this is a personal preference. Shooters, I don't like when they overstay their welcome. Multiplayer going in and doing matches every time is different. I'm competitive. It's something to a shooter storyline. That, that's my concern with Wolfenstein too. Is like is Wolfenstein two gonna over? I'm I really like the story idea of Wolfenstein two, but am I gonna burn out on it like I did at Wolfenstein one, where I was just like, all right, I'm gonna shoot more shit. I don't want to do this. Like, is it gonna keep me engaged and entertained and interested? Mm. And for Star Wars, where I am about the story, I'm hoping that'll be good. You know, it's sort of easily forgettable. It's coming out. I'm really excited for Call of Duty World War Two. Mm. I'm really mm. excited for that campaign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's a game where I I tried out the multiplayer when the beta was out, and you got me a code for it. Yeah. Uh, and I just I died a lot, and I was like, I'm gonna play this game when it is single player because I love that era, and yeah. I I want to see what sort of stories that they can tell. And in that's this the time thing frame. too is like I feel like you know the story they keep pitching for that and the cast they have for that makes me excited of like all right cool it is mm-hmm. a World War II campaign that isn't the Battle of the Bulge and it isn't landing on Normandy. It's like hey, it's these guys from this time window get to know them Band of Brothers style. And if it's yeah. like hey yeah, give me a what would be a three or four episode Band of Brothers arc. Okay, yeah, I'm in for that. Yeah, Let's see six up. hour game. I'm so down for that. Andy, it's time to squad up. All right. This is where one of you writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and you give me your name, username, platform of choice, and where and why you need friends. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Everybody plays together and you have a good time. I should be looking up. You're wrong right now, right? But I can't. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Just, <laughs> just refresh the Google page. It's there for you. All right. We do have a new segment, though, before we get there. Okay, so you still cool. got time. Today, Kevin writes in, he needs help on PlayStation 4. His username is, this is all one word. No, not Kevin Coelho, sorry. Uh, Lone Wolf D Lord. Lone Wolf D Lord. Lone Wolf Dick Lord. (laughs) D, the D is for that. He writes in and says, Greg, thanks to your championship of this game. I picked up a copy of Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. And oh my God, I love it. 
I was never a big online game player, but now, thanks to this, I need a fun group of best friends who won't quit early, babble nonsense, and aren't just blaring horrible music through game chat. Thanks. Love everything you do. Keep fucking that chicken. Kinda funny. Everybody, you're always quick to go play Friday the 13th with me on PlayStation 4. Now, Lone Wolf D Lord needs your help. Go get that. Andy. What's up, Greg? Do you have your rung up and cue? I do have your do you rung wanna up. Do you want to knock them out real quick? Sure, I'll knock them out. we have a new segment after that. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, let's see here. Um, Greg, you mistakenly called Andy the Hispanic heartthrob. As you must be aware uh, from the Reddit thread, Andy's moniker is now the Spanish guy. Remember that one guy? Who just True. Just called me the Spanish guy. All right, sorry. Guy. The Spanish guy. Andy um, Cortez. Let's see here. Um, DNA is a company who says... Uh, right. From Capitalist Pig. Yeah, D-E, capital N-A. Capitalist Pig, man. Kills it. Yeah. Right, wrong. Uh, let's see here. Shredberg also mentioned that. Let's see. Uh, Rockstar. Apparently, according to Big Daddy Wolf, Rockstar officially announced single-player DLC would be coming in 2014. That never came out, obviously. Uh, Franklin, the actor, was Sean Fontano. Fontano? No. I said Fontaine, yeah. I okay. mispronounced it. So he tweeted out a photo of him in a mocap suit in January 2016. Mm. Uh, and he has not appeared in Grand Theft Auto Online. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, let, okay. Jay Free talks about the game that I was thinking of. I was thinking of Black as the big game. It was Mag. Had the, oh. the large multiplayer sort of... Really? Yes. Yeah, it can't be what you were talking about, though. Well, you, you know that's not an Xbox. Well, no, no, no. Game, yeah, right? no, no. I know. Original Xbox. Fuck, yeah. I hate this. Um, but Mag is the game where I was thinking about like having where a fuck ton of players could okay. play online. Massive action game Massive is what Mag game? stood for. Well, uh, in the beginning, by the time it published, it did not mean that. Uh, it meant okay. nothing. Similar to IGN. Uh, yeah, so Metal Last Year also says Black did not have multiplayer, just eight single player levels uh, made by Codemasters. Capitalist Pig comes back against a siphon filter. Logan Shadow was the second PSP game. The okay. first PSP game was Dark Mirror. Ah, yeah. Um, it was Logan Shadow that had the underwater part. Let's see here. TG Bird. A few people are telling me to how I pronounce uh, that linear is pronounced linear, not linear. Don't worry about and it. And it's probably just because I'm Hispanic and I just say linear. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You know what I mean? They're, again, call them racist and move on. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Once you, you throw got, that at them. You got the jet out, get can't out say of jail free card. You know what I mean? <laughs> can't say anything back. <laughs> uh, was get out, is, that, is get out of jail free like a racist thing too? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it can be any. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Robert Gray says, during the list of upcoming games, Greg incorrectly calls a new Dragon Ball Z game fighter z the game creators have said it's pronounced fighters oh they should have spelled it not stupid then because i believe it's like intercap too call, well you you can call them racist or whoever said that here well i can't call them racist oh right right right. well that's it for you're wrong greg okay that's Hold it. On. i'm going back to seeing how they how they spelled it because it's what dragon ball fighter and then a capital z so it's fighter spelled normal then a capital z shoved at the ass of that that's a stupid fucking name when you do that you get it's gonna get called whatever the fuck it gets called and if you don't like it, boo-hoo, you should have fucking titled your game like a normal person. Not like you're running out of characters in Twitter and you gotta shove everything together. Here another one, here's another one from NBZ that I, I sort of scrolled by and didn't read. Uh, regarding a gaff replacement, a group of admins and mods have got together to create a site called Reset Era and is currently in the process of being built. You can follow Reset Era Forum on Twitter. Uh, initially, Open Critic were interested in trying to make a gaff re replacement, but withdrew after discussions with the folks behind Reset Era. So hopefully the community community can migrate to one new hub instead of being fractured at different forums. Currently, side admins will include people like analyst Daniel Amar, who is Zuj at EX on Twitter, Nibel, Nibelian, and Shinobi, Shinobi602. But as always, these things are in flux and subject to change. Thank you, NBZ. Thank you. I'm getting hot again. I feel hot again. You getting sick again? My body feels hot. I need I mean, some... You're wearing a coat in the hot room. I need room, some painkillers is what I'm... You know, some like... Just take Advil. Well, reducer. That's what I mean, yeah. Okay, sure. Well, that's a... Day quill. It's hard. New segment. <laughs> it's called Josh Grav Gripes. Of course, we all know Josh Grav well. A supporter on Patreon.com slash whatever. Kind of funny or kind of funny games. I can't remember. He's been there since day one. We've talked to him a million times on our Skype calls. He's trying to call me out here. Because, of course, Extra Life is right around the corner. November 4th. 24 hours of games. Go sign up to be part of it. Kind of funny.com slash Extra Life. Last week with Gary Witta. We talked about Trials of the Nine going offline for two weeks. Because of the bug. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it'll be back Extra Life weekend. Mm. To which I said, maybe I'll platinum it then. Mm. Josh Grab gripes. On Friday's Kind of Funny Games Daily, Greg spoke about Destiny 2 and getting the platinum during Extra Life. I'm calling this right now, with all with peace and love, but there is no way on God's green earth that is going to happen, and I will explain why. 
Let's take a trip back to November 2015. You fucking quitter. For weeks, <laughs> Greg was talking about platinuming Metal Gear Solid 5 during the 2015 Extra Life stream. On the day of the stream, I posted a comment stating that I had platinum Metal Gear Solid 5 a few weeks prior, and with all Greg had left to do, I didn't think it was possible for him to get the platinum, but wished him all the luck. Greg read this comment along with others who shared similar opinions and became angry. Parentheses, pretend angry, not real angry. Greg finally had enough and promised he would absolutely would get the platinum and that he would come through our computer screens and suck our dicks <laughs> <laughs> to death as well. <laughs> Both of those promises have gone unfulfilled. Yeah. To this day, he's still stuck at 81% trophy completion on Metal Gear Solid 5 and has yet to come through my computer screen or anyone else's, to my knowledge, to give so much as a hand job. Back to the present. Greg stated on Friday that he would like to get all the trophies he still has to get in Destiny 2, parentheses, minus the Trials trophy, which will not be available again until November 3rd, before Extra Life stream, and then get the stream then on the stream get the trials of the nine not only do i not see greg getting the platinum on extra life but i don't think he will get more than one trophy in destiny Damn, 2 leading up shit. to the extra life if any at all there are too many good games coming out now between now and then and i don't think his focus would be on destiny 2 That's a good point i'm so sure that this isn't going to happen that i'm almost willing to bet chopping off my left pinky finger if he actually does it I'm sorry, Greg. I have the platinum, and I know what you have left to do and what it's going to take to get it. Not that it's impossible on any stretch of the imagination, but I just can't see it happening by extra life with all due respect. I'm sorry, but hey, the challenge has been issued. Prove us wrong and get it done. My pinky finger might be on the line. Again, I say all this in good fun. The Platinum Prince! Josh Graff, because Josh Graff has way too many platinum trophies. Josh Graff says, with all due respect, but it seems like he's also just talking a lot of shit. In but this. this is the thing: is like Josh Graff, a true best friend. He's mm -hmm. he's talking shit in the same way you and I talk shit oh, about the kind of funny championship that I have that I beat you for that I'm way better than right. games. You like, got a lot of practice beforehand. Just saying, oh, I mean, like you, you, you know, to, you just never let the market. You got to race beforehand. You, know, stuff, you, know, yeah. you could have done. Too. I shouldn't have mentioned. Shouldn't have mentioned what circuit we were doing on stream. Yeah, and you're watching. It was a bad idea because yeah, I got to go dust it off. Hadn't played in like three months. Um, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Josh Graff. If you think I'm good at trophies, like, you know, I'm obsessed with them. If you think I like like trophies, Josh Grav, another echelon. Mm. He is, he's literally God, and I'm like Moses. a pastor at your lo local church. Oh, uh, okay. Like, I'm not even talking directly to him. I've got to go through a bunch of cardinals to get to the Pope to have him write a letter and send it up on a dove. Who's the guy that, like, didn't open his church when the floods are happening? Oh, um, uh, Mo jo Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm definitely not that. Not I Joel Osteen. Maybe I do have a mega really? church. I guess I have a mega church here. It doesn't yeah. matter. I digress. Uh, I still feel it's doable, and I got Sean Pitts. That's the thing. Sean Pitts is the ace in the, in the hole here because I got to yeah, have him drag me through this Trials of Nine bullshit on the stream so I can get that fucking trophy, and then I got to do uh, what? One of the prestige. Uh, not the uh, fire. Uh, it's what is it? Raid or nightfall? Nightfall. Thank you so much. I feel like I can knock that out this week with Griffin and Sean. Have them carry me through that shit. Right. Then I just got to get my. I got to just sit down and finish that, and then build up a warlock. It's not hard. Just don't. I mean, the problem with them is like they're so good. You're gonna have to like. You're like the quarterback who is now follow me here, Greg. I'm, I'm already. I know where you're going. You were like the they're second the offensive line. You are no. You are the second year quarterback who is put in there and whose job is to not lose the game for them. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Like the guy. You know. It's like, hey, do whatever you want to do. Do your your five yard check down passes, but do not turn the ball over. Yep. We, just we got, do not. You do not want to be the reason that your team loses. Exactly. And yeah. I will. When we do trials on that, I definitely will. Oh, be the I've, reason we lose a couple. Oh, I've been the reason uh, tons of times with yeah. him and Griffin and. Barrett and Danny and all them. Yeah. What I got to do is touch base with Sean Pitts today. Actually, hold on. Trevor Starkey, I assume you're watching. He's in LA, I think. Who? Sean. I think he's coming back today. It doesn't matter. Anyone who wants to, tweet at Sean Twisters and find out if today's... He's going to get such a boner that you're, that you're tweeting at him. That's good. That's yeah. good. Take a, uh, Sean, I want you to Snapchat story. <laughs> <laughs> you boner. No, uh, I want find out is today's prestige nightfall an easy one? Or should we just let it ride till tomorrow when they reset and do the prestige nightfall tomorrow? Mm. That's the thing. Because that's the only thing I can't do outside of Trials of Nine on my own. But I can't do Trials of Nine, period, till that's available on Extra Life Weekend. Mm. I can do this. I can do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been kind you. of... Fuck you, Andy! <laughs> this has been kind of funny. Don't be a Cheeks Jr. about it, even though they're pretty right about Persona 5. We'll talk about that in a <laughs> uh, This has been kind of funny games daily each and every week down a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about then. We talk to you, give you perspective, answer some questions, have a good time, enjoy 
our time with you. We hope you enjoy it with us. If you like that, watch live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Listen on podcast services around the globe. Consider supporting us. Maybe just go and buy this new kind of funny games t shirt available at kind of funny.com slash store. Maybe you just tell your friends because you got no money. So you just tell your friends about the show and they come watch it. Ask, and ask for a Halloween gift. When you, you know, when you get around, when you get together with your family and you exchange Halloween gifts, okay. Ask for this shirt. <laughs> That's usually how it works. That yeah. Is, I think generally how it works. Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, Andrea Renee joins me for Kind of Funny Games Daily. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I'm sorry, everyone. Shake my hand, Sicky.